Hey everybody, Sprocket here again. Look at here what I got. Whole bunch of new parts. Now these here for the Nova. Uh, made sure I got a hold of upper and lower control arm bushings. I got the sway bar bushings. Now in the upper control arm bushings I got the shaft kits because I have no idea how worn the old ones are. Of course they are older than I am so I um, want to make sure I got a hold of those. Now everything's AC Delco. Uh, what else did I get? Oh, I also got upper and lower ball joints. So, you guess what I'm doing today. I'll bring you back in a little bit. Alright, I don't know how well you can see this, but this is why we're doing the sway bar bushings. You can see how it's all cracked and squeezed out. It's as old as the car is. This side here is about the same. So, what we're going to do, we're going to knock those out first because I need somewhere to put my front jack stands. So I got rear ones back there, you can see. Uh, we're up on the jack right now, but for safety's sake, I want to be able to put it on jack stands. Two back there, because they're lower. I got taller ones to put up front here, but uh, <laughs> figuring out where to put them where they're not going to be in the way to do the other stuff is the problem. So I'm probably going to end up putting them on those bushing uh, brackets. Whoa, too close, uh, right there. So I'm going to go ahead and knock those out first. All right, so this is what it looks like once you get the uh, bracket off. Here's your bracket. Okay. So this just has a split in it. Now this is supposed to be here. <clears throat> Otherwise, how do you get it on and off? So pull that out of the way. I'm going to clean up this area here. Whoop. And on this end, get all this stuff cleaned up. And then I'm going to anti-seize these threads on the bolts. Because even if I'm not going to be the one in here, someone may be down the road or if I have to for some reason that way they'll come out a lot easier it's just a good rule of thumb and he sees the bolts that you put back in all right here's a look between the old one and the new one now don't worry about the fact that everything looks bigger on this one what happens is when you put the bracket back down on this thing it squeezes squeezes all this stuff out and makes it fit in there so it's supposed to be a real snug fit so that's supposed to happen so don't be concerned with that as long as you ordered the right part you know for the right size bar like for instance mine had the option of being a 7 8 or a 15 16 I measured my sway bar it was 15 16 so that's what I ordered for so like I said don't be discouraged if you see this because this used to look like that before it get all squished in there and take up all of those clearances inside of there so it's a nice snug fit and that of course is to make sure that your front end is a little bit tighter when you're trying to turn corners and stuff like that all right all right so i don't know how well you can see this but let's see if i can yeah there we go what you want to do is get your rubber around the sway bar and you want to center it up make sure this bolt here is centered in the rubber and then this way I don't know how well you can see my fingers rotating here but you want to make sure that you get the flat part up in here of the rubber as flat against as you can so when you tighten this down it doesn't cock sideways on you it just goes straight up and squishes so you want to try and tighten these bolts as evenly as possible so go I don't know like a turn and then go back on the other side to a turn back and forth back and forth like I said, you're trying to tighten that evenly so everything squishes out the way it's supposed to. Alright, so once you get everything tightened down, you can see everything got squished out. You see how this is pressed in against. That's going to hold that in place so it doesn't shift around on you. And everything is nice and tight in there. So, those are done. And we're going to move on. going to pull the wheels do the ball joints sway bar bushings or not sway bar bushings the um, control arm bushings uh, yeah that requires use of other tools I got to pull the shocks out of there so that way I can get my uh, internal spring compressor up inside there because those springs are under a lot of tension all right so now we got tire off we can see what we have to work with here's your upper ball joint and 
One way to know if this is original, if these are rivets. These are still rivets, that means it's original to the car. Now, mine weren't necessarily bad, but my control arm bushings are about shut, so I have to pull the ball joint, pop the ball joint loose in order to be able to do those. So, I figured I'm here, might as well replace them. So, one thing you're going to need to do, so we just did those bushings up there, but the end links, wow, it's one heck of a glare. There we go. As you can see, I've already replaced those, but I need to pull them loose so when I go to unbolt the ball joints, my lower control arm will come down some in order for me to be able to get that spring out of the way and to get the lower control arm off. So, the other thing you want to make sure you do, if you look back here at this bolt, or not bolt, it's a stud, this one and then that one down there. You see all that crud in there, you want to scrape that out of there so that way you can actually get either wrench or ratchet, whichever one you're trying to use to get it off of there. So, what I've already done, you see right here, looks a little wet. I PB blasted that, and what you can't see is up on top of here is the two bolts that hold this in, which you can't access till you pop loose this... Um, upper control arm, uh, the ball joint right here, Oop, there we go, once you pop this loose you can flip this up in order to be able to access the actual bolt heads because they're underneath of there. Now the nuts are on the other side, I've already pre-soaked those with PB Blaster and like I said I pre-soaked both ends and also down here in the lower control arms I pre-soaked those. So I've got everything soaking in penetrant so that way Hopefully, when I get to that point, they'll come loose without breaking or without giving me any grief. Uh, I still have to put some on my shock bolts. I have replaced those shocks, but I don't think I put anything on the bolts when I did that, which is definitely an oops. You want to make sure you do that. Um, my suggestion, if you're ever going to do something like this, is only do one side at a time because you have no idea what you're going to run into. So don't pull both sides apart at the same time if you have to use that car within a couple of days, which I do. So, I mean, if it's in the garage, obviously it doesn't matter. You know, if it's a project car, whatever. So anyway. Okay, something I want to mention here. Uh, anytime you take something apart that has multiple pieces, if you have the ability to put it back together before you actually put it back on the vehicle... Do so the way it's supposed to sit so you know, just in case, you know, you might do this one day and then months down the road. So that way, in the event you didn't take a video or a picture, you know how it's supposed to go in there. Just something to think about. I don't know how well you can see this, but remember I told you I scraped the junk off of there? You see right here how thick this stuff is on here. Like this here is the actual metal, and you can see I've got a quarter inch thick of crud on this thing. So it's always good to scrape that kind of stuff off of there while you're working so that way it's not in the way. It also makes the job a little bit cleaner when you actually get in there with tools. Alright, so, got the cotter pin out. Now if you can help it with these smaller ones, you never want to reuse them. So having one of those little kits from like Harbor Freight or something is always a good idea. So, pre-soaked it. I wasn't going to pull the steering arms, but then I thought better of it. Just to get it completely, my spindle, completely out of the way. I'm going to go ahead, take these loose, so once I get the ball joints out, I can just pull this whole thing and just get it out of the way. Um, one thing I found easier to get these things out of here, because it's a taper seat. So, basically, it's pressed in, kind of, sort of-ish. So you want to make sure you loosen up this, just make it flush with this is one way to do it. I always leave the nut on there, so what you do is you hammer on the side of the uh, steering knuckle here on the spindle, and usually that will pop this loose. You want to avoid, if you want to reuse this, you don't want to use the pickle fork because it tears up the rubber. So the other way to do it, like I say, you flush the nut out with the top of the stud here, and if knocking on this doesn't get it loose, you can hammer down on that so that way you don't damage the threads. So, I'll show you more in a bit. So, this is what I was telling you. You get the nut up here, it's flush with the stud. 
So what you want to do, like I said, you want to hammer on this. Mini sledge works good for that. So noise alert. And there it is, popped loose. Then you just take the nut off and you can drop it out of place. So, as you can see, like I was saying, scrape the junk off of here so now you can actually see the nut. And you got the cotter pins right there. And you got this one. Paradikes, which is short for diagonal cutting pliers, for those that don't know, uh, is the best way to get cotter pins out. So, I already started on this one pull it out what you want to try and do is make it as straight as you can now you see this little nub here that's the one that's usually a problem but because of the shape of these you can usually get in behind it and go like that all right then squeeze it together like I said you want to try and make it straight now what you're not going to be able to see is on the other side yeah where the other end of it is. You can grab a hold of it with dikes if you can. Sometimes you gotta try and get this thing to come out. What are you trying to drop on me? Nothing. Something fell over. It's still up there though. Okay. But the best way I have found, if you can get in here, is to grab a hold of it with a cutting surface and use the nut as a pry can't always get a hold of it though and that's the problem sometimes these snap off inside of there because you know they're old they're rusty but it's also a really tight area to try and get into and we are binding on the knuckle great so again we're trying to make this straight See, right now we got a hump in it. That's not helping me. Let's see. So we need to come up. Uh, that's, hey, that's a little better. Whether it'll do me any good or not, that's a different question. Yeah, there we go. See how it's going? Whoops. That was my caliper. No worries. I've got it tied up back here so that it's not stressing on the hose. So that's the first thing, you want to try and make sure you can get it to move inside the bore. And then, like I was saying, grab a hold of the other end with the cutting surface of your dikes. Give it a good, good quick, tight squeeze and try and use it as a pry. And see, this is why you want to try and make it straight. I still have a hump in here and it's causing me grief because it doesn't want to come out. So sometimes you have to go past the other direction to get it to come straight. Ugh. Hey, I need those. You're supposed to try and keep that in your hand. Yeah. Generally, once you get it straight enough, you can just kind of tap out. it out yep. or pull it out. But it doesn't always work that way, especially if there's just a slight bind on it from the... Uh, Way the nuts in there. Now, this one is fighting me. Um, I'm trying to think how I can. So what we're going to do is we're going to because it's still as you can see you got the gap there and then here this is still bent down so that's what's causing me problems. So just kind of tap it. There we go should allow me to get in there to get it out, I hope, because it's always better to get these out than to break them off, because if you break them off, that really can cause problems with the nut. Wow, that one really doesn't want to come out of there. At least it's moving. So now you can see some of the struggle of an old car. For those that don't know, anyway. It's time consuming. And it can really be problematic. So you gotta have patience. 
It also helps when you set this up, put it back in. If you set it a direction where it's easily, more easily accessible, that helps too. So something is still binding. So I'll bring you back when I can figure it out. So finally got it out. Now you see these little humps right here. This is why it was giving me grief coming out. You know, like I said, you want to try and get this thing as straight as you can. And these little notches, that's from my dikes. That's where I was saying you grab a hold of it. And you don't want to squeeze too hard because if it's a smaller one, what happens is you just cut it off. So you want to try to avoid that because that makes it harder to get out. But finally got that one out. Basically, I had to change the angle of attack, which you wouldn't have been able to see because it was from the other side. So, again, same thing you would do with the, um, same thing we did with this anyway, is back the nut down, flush it out. We're going to do the same thing with the bottom one here. Now, before I pull the shock and compress the spring, what I'm going to do is, that's why we leave the nuts on, because this thing is under tension right now. So what I'm going to do to pop loose the tapers, because both the upper and lower ball joints are still on tapers as well, is we're going to hammer on the side of the spindle here to break them loose. Then we'll compress the spring to be able to remove it. So, one thing I wanted to let you know makes your job easier. Anytime you're dealing with old rusty stuff, you want to try to tighten it first. Just a little bit. That breaks the torque on it. Um, nine times out of ten with a rusty bolt you can get it out without breaking it if you do it that way. It's that one in ten that's really aggravating. So the other thing you want to do is try to use the steering stops as something to help you. You hear that? That's the steering stop. Now for the top one what I've done is I went a little bit tightened. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the other steering stop to loosen it. So that way you don't have to try and hold this thing in place while you're doing the work. All right? All right, so see here, I just have a little gap here. So my nut, I have full engagement of the thread, which means that there's threads in the whole surface of the nut. Now, because of how much tension this spring is under, you want to make sure that this nut, when you go to break this thing loose, that it's got full thread so it doesn't just round strip right off when that pressure hits it. So you only want to back it down a little bit, just enough that this will have enough room to break loose. Just wanted to make sure everybody's aware of that for safety's sake, that's what you want to do. So, we were very blessed to be able to get the bottom cotter pin out, of the uh, bottom ball joint cotter pin that is. As you can see, it's crusty. Now, the top one I had had out before when I did the springs and shocks, but this one I've never taken out. So, again, patience, take your time. This could have been very ugly had it broken. Now, granted, I'm replacing the ball joints anyway, but sometimes what'll happen is if you shear them off, they will jam the nut on there and you won't be able to spin it off the shaft if the shaft breaks loose inside of the uh, spindle. So, like I said, I can't stress this enough. Take your time and be patient. Alright guys, one piece of advice that I would uh, strongly suggest you adhere to. Before you start any project, make sure you have all the tools you need. Um, I got as far as to the point where I needed to uh, use my internal spring compressor to compress the coil spring so that way I could uh, remove it and remove my control arms. Here's the problem. My internal spring compressor, I loaned to my brother. He never gave it back. So uh, the wife went after it. So now I'm sitting and I'm losing an hour of work time because I didn't check ahead of time to make sure I had my tools. So be sure you do that. All right, so um, sorry you missed out on some of the work, but trust me, you didn't want to watch it anyway. It was very frustrating. So, as you can see, new upper ball joint is held in with bolts. And there's the new shafts. You can only see the end of it because everything else is covered up. Uh, lower ball joint is installed. Let me tell you what a pain in the butt that was. And control arm bushings up in there. They're replaced. And again, 
If you don't have the right tools to do this stuff, it does take a lot longer and you have to be really ingenuitive. I'm one of those guys. So I guess the moral of the story would be try and get the right tools. All right, I'll show you more in a little bit when I get further on. All right, so spindle is now installed with my rotor. Whee! So I got to take the uh, spring compressor out of there yet. Uh, I haven't tightened down the bolts back here, bottom ones there, or these top ones. I want to have the weight of the car on them before I do that because those bushings don't want to, ro uh, not rotate, um, they don't pivot except on the rubber once they're tightened up because they got the inner steel shaft and then that's tightened up in these, uh, whoop, yeah, in these here brackets. So you want to make sure the weight of the car is on them before you tighten that stuff up. So that's where we're at. All right, so spring compressor is out. Spring is in the correct place. Now, because this is a coil spring and the ends are not flattened off, there's a little pocket down in here where the end sits into. So you got to make sure you have this thing twisted in the right position. And up inside of here, there is a little cup that sits on the inside of the spring in, in between the coils here. Whoop, let me show you. In between the coils. There's also a rubber, what they call an insulator, that sits up in there too. Trying to get all that stuff lined up all at once while you're trying to compress this arm up is no easy task. But it can be done with patience. And the first time I did this, I did not have patience and it really, I got very aggravated. So I'm just letting you know take your time i can't stress that enough so got to put the steering back on that thing right out there brakes and other than tightening stuff up this side should be pretty much ready to go so i'll show you those pockets i'm talking about when i do the other side tomorrow but uh yeah i'll show you once i get all this stuff back together all right so Everything, for the most part, is back together on this side. Bricks are in here. Uh, all this stuff back here is reattached. The shock's back in and tightened down. Last step, grease it. It's the most important step. Don't forget to do that. So that's it for today. It got dark on me. I don't know if you can tell or not because the light's on here. But until next time, have a good one.